influencer marketing is on the rise. It's estimated that almost $16.4 billion will be spent on influencers this year alone. And this number is only going to grow. 90% of marketers that use influencer marketing believe that it's a very effective tool because it gives a higher ROI than traditional marketing sources. I've been working with influencers for years and today I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to growth hack using influencers. So stay tuned. Before getting into the tips and tricks, you have to really understand how to categorize the different types of influencers. In terms of size, it's very straightforward. There are four different types of influencers. Mega, macro, micro, and nano. Mega influencers have more than 1 million followers. Macro influencers, 100,000 to a million. Micro influencers, 10,000 to 100,000. And nano influencers is anything below 10,000. Besides the size, you also have to understand the category they're in. So based on category, there are 15 different types of influencers. Celebrity, lifestyle, fashion, beauty, sports or fitness, travel, parenting, photography, music, food, gaming, SAS or reviews, pets, real estate, and virtual. Virtual is quite a new one. It's pretty cool. All the other ones are pretty self-explanatory, but virtual influencers are basically influencers that do not really exist. They're AI-based. They're robots. A good example of this is little Michaela, who has over 3 million followers and deals with Calvin Klein, Dior, Prada, etc. Let's get down to the bread and butter of today's video. The tips and tricks. Number one, do it yourself first. I've been working with influencers for over 10 years now. So the reality is it's a little bit more complicated than it seems. If you haven't worked with influencers before, your gut reaction is, well, what's the big deal? I find the influencer, I text them, they answer, I pay them some money and they do whatever it is that they do. It's a little bit more complicated than that. The first thing you need to do and the first issue that you're gonna come across is how do you find influencers that are good for your product or your brand? Well, there's a lot of cloud-based tools out there that you could use, but the reality is that if you're just starting off your influencer marketing activities, if you're just starting off your flows with influencer marketing, it's best to do it by hand and brute force it upfront. I I started using these tools in the beginning and had no results whatsoever. If you don't know what you're looking for, these tools are going to confuse you more than they're actually going to help. So it's better to do it with your team by hand in the beginning, get used to it, understand the flows, understand what works for you and what doesn't before you start using any type of automation tool. Once you have a flow in place, then you can take that process and put it in an automation tool and scale it. So tip number one, do it yourself first. Number two, choose the size of the influencer wisely. Mega influencers are great because they have huge reach. The problem with mega influencers is they have huge reach. Let me explain. People follow Ronaldo's page because they like how he plays football. So he's an expert of football. He's not necessarily an expert of online productivity tools. He's not an expert of chocolate or is simply not an expert. So they follow him because he's a football player or they follow Adele because she's a singer. People follow these mega influencers for a certain talent and that doesn't necessarily then relate to your product or your brand and doesn't necessarily convert into sales. Plus, they're very, very expensive. The other issue with mega influencers is if they're promoting any product, then it's obvious to everyone that they're being paid for it. So it comes across as advertising and not organic word of mouth. Macro influencers Influencers is a good balance area. You get a good mix between larger visibility, so there's a potential to go viral, and engagement. Macro influencers are experts in a specific niche field, so people trust them. When a doctor influencer promotes a food supplement, we tend to believe him or her because the source is credible. So you get higher engagement, which turns into higher sales conversion. Macro influencers are also great for affiliate marketing, so take that into consideration as well. Micro influencers are awesome. They're cheap, so you can kind of spread it out. You can have five, six, eight different micro influencers in one shot. See which one of them is actually working, which one of them is bringing traffic and conversion. And from there, you can kind of follow up and grow more and more into that relationship. So you can experiment a little bit more because they're cheap, 
They're still trying to kind of find their voice. Their content isn't necessarily high production value, but they can really drive a lot of conversion towards your site. It's a bit hit and miss, so you have to experiment. Nano influencers. I work for an SAS company and I use a lot of nano influencers on YouTube specifically when it comes to SAS reviews. These nano influencers are great. For example, we had a case where we paid a hundred bucks for a five minute review video. He got 2,500 views total. We got 200 users from that one video. So the conversion is super, super high. The reason why this is happening is because the 2,500 people that actually watched the video are there specifically to watch SAES reviews. So they're actually people who are engaged and actively looking to buy productivity tools, which then allows for the nano influencers to be more effective. Tip number two, choose the size of your influencer wisely. Number three, spread your budget. Do you go macro? Do you go micro? Do you go nano? Do you go mega? Well, if you're a startup and you really don't have a $2 million, $3 million ad budget, you're looking for small cost versus big returns. I would say you really don't want to go after macro or mega. Primarily focus on nano and micro because those are the ones that are going to give you short-term direct results right into your ROI. Same goes for e-commerce sites. If you're an e-commerce site selling sunglasses, nano and micro, again, you're going to see direct sales into your pipeline. So what I usually do is one macro per month, then I I do five or six nano or micro. The macro is good for me because it also creates a snowball effect. So I don't expect a lot of direct registrations or direct sales from macro, but once something goes on a macro influencer's page, it starts snowballing from there. Other micro and nano influencers also copy from the macro because they see it's a topic that's going viral and they kind of want to jump on that bandwagon. So we kind of get that snowball effect and it grows and we get a lot of awareness. We get a super high amount of traffic to the site not necessarily a high percentage in terms of conversion, but again, just in terms of pure numbers, it starts making sense. So usually I go one macro and then I really focus on the nano and the micro. And that's what I go with. Once we get into an area where I'm not looking for direct ROI, but I'm looking for more brand building in the medium or long term, something that might pay off a year or two years down the line, then we'll start moving into that mega influencer area and really trying to push brand values. So tip three, spread your budget. Number four, use a pipeline approach. I would say on average, we probably send out about 20 to 25 emails to 20, 25 different influencers and get about two responses in return, more or less. So every 10 or 12 influencers I find that I might want to work with, I'll probably only get one answer back. There are things you can do to get that number up, like an evergreen campaign. So I email them once and then three days later, an automatic second email goes. And then three days after that, we attach on another touch point like their social media. Then we do another DM. And at that point, if there's no connection, we simply write them off. So as long as I'm emailing 20, 25 influencers per month, then I should be able to get two on board, which means if I want to have a stable stream of six influencers per month, then I need to send out about 60 to 75 emails to maintain my pipeline. A side tip here, for micro and nano. We started by putting them in the same pipeline, but that was a mistake. We simply started emailing them a direct offer upfront, sort of like, hey, we want to sponsor a video. We are willing to pay a hundred bucks. If you're interested, buzz us back. That tactic netted us quicker results. Tip four, use a pipeline approach. Number five, negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Mega and macro influencers tend to have a team and the negotiations look and feel a lot like what you would expect from a business perspective. They'll send you a PDF document that includes an offer. It has all the relevant information you might be looking for, like target audience, reach metrics, engagement metrics, etc. You are most likely not going to have direct contact with the actual influencer, but will be negotiating with sales manager or an account manager. They have slightly more rigid policies and not a lot of wiggle room. They don't want to work with a hundred different companies every month. They prefer to work with you know, four or five companies, but on a longer term basis. So when you're negotiating with them, make sure you're asking for bundle deals, discounts for a longer term contract. And instead of just straight up asking for a lower price, I found it easier to ask for more added value within the same price they're asking for. Micro and Nano is a different animal. 
you're negotiating with a human being and not an entity. They really don't have a strict price policy. So most of the time, they're just trying to figure out how much you're willing to pay and they're going to price accordingly. We've had people ask for $100 all the way up to $7,000 for one video. So they're just firing off a number. What I usually do is always answer back for about 40% of their initial offer. So let's say they ask for a thousand bucks. Well, I'll counter with 400 and that gives me a good baseline to negotiate. But you really want to go low, really low, really quick and then negotiate up from there. There's a lot of micro and nano influencers out there. So if you lose one because of pricing, you'll get another one. It's not that big of a deal. Tip five, negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Number six, deep dive into the metrics. As soon as any influencer gets in touch with us, we will directly answer back and say, please send us screenshots of your analytics, target audience, countries, reach, engagement, etc. We take it a step further and manually check the trends on the posts. How often does does the influencer post? Are the views going up or are they going down? Is the engagement going up or down, etc. What I usually look for is first of all, target audience. Does my target match their followers? Then I'm running a reality check to make sure the followers are not fake accounts. Influencers can always fake the amount of people following them or the number of views on a post or a video, but it's extremely hard to fake engagement. So if you have a video that has 100,000 views, but only has 100 likes, then that raises a red flag. This is the part of the process where you need to be picky, really nitpick on the details and if your spidey senses tingle and something is off make sure you ask the influencer why and if the answer is not good then bye bye tip six deep dive into the metrics. Number seven, don't mess with their content. Once you have found them, once you have the deal, how do you generate content? How much of the content do you actually control? This is very crucial. The key with influencer marketing is that it looks a lot like word of mouth. That's the real value. You want them to be talking from their voice, from themselves, from their perspective. Like they're the one who are using your product or your brand. They like it. That's why they're showing it to their followers. You don't want it to look like an ad. You want it to look like word of mouth. What I usually do is give them the use case. So this is the product and this is how we want people to use the product. Create content for this. And that's it, more or less. We don't give them any scripts. We don't give them copywriting content. We don't give them hashtags or anything like that. Now we do ask them to send us the video so we can confirm it before they post it. But in 90% of the cases, we give them no feedback. In the 10%, the feedback is mostly technical, like misspelled words or something of that nature. But we don't really go into the details of tone of voice or anything like that because we want it to seem organic and authentic. Tip seven, don't mess with their content. Number eight, start now. Last but not least, the last tip I have is do influencer marketing now. Do it now. Don't do it tomorrow. Don't say, oh, it's not a priority. Do it now. Influencer marketing should be your number one priority, especially if you're small or medium business. Influencer marketing's impact on ROI is tremendous compared to the cost. You can get brand awareness and conversion all in one shot. Influencers can give you a massive, massive impact. The market for influencers is growing and it's not going to stop. So better be ahead of the curve then behind it. Thanks guys for watching the video. If you like what you see, please help us out and subscribe. I'll see you next week.